this will be unit 4 lecture number 2 the second lecture of unit 4 and the second lecture we are going to talk about some important topics like cell division and regulation all those in CSI and net syllabus cell cycle and cell cycle regulation is a part of chapter 2 but actually it's more linked with cancer biology that's why we put cell cycle regulation and cell cycle process in chapter 4 or unit 4 then cell death signaling pathways like cell apoptosis role of p53 in cell cycle regulation in regulating apoptosis as well as controlling cancer and finally we'll talk about cancer biology the onset of cancer the mechanism the hallmarks of cancer and finally cancer medication anything related to cancer biology is very very important for CSI net exam and the number written after every single subtopics name represents the approximate number of questions you are going to expect from this topic in CSI net exam now for all this process of cell cycle there are different phases of cell cycle and I believe all of you know the phases of cell cycle and that is uh, the separate four phases G1, S, G2 and M phase M phase is the actual phase where the mitotic process takes place means you know the process of uh, segregation of the chromosomes and actual physical division of the cell which is known as the cytokinesis uh, take place apart from that the most of the time consuming part of a cell division process is interphase which contains three separate sub phases like G1, S, G2 G1 is gap 1, G S phase is synthesis phase and G2 is gap 2 phase and in G1 phase it produces necessary proteins required for the DNA replication process to continue in S phase the DNA replication process itself can continue and in the G2 phase the gap 2 phase it produces all the proteins that are necessary for uh, the process of cytokinesis as well as uh, the producers some RNA and stuff so and there is another phase which is it's kind of hidden phase G0 phase uh, known as the quiescent or senescent uh, part of the cell cycle this G0 state is a state uh, where a cell can enter if there is something wrong going on during the interface of the cell so it can really uh, shift to the G0 state once it's shifted to the G0 state it can remain dormant in the form of G0 state for a long period of time and that can be done you know that can be possible so uh, the cell cycle as, as we are going to talk about now in the picture you can see uh, only one thing is required for you to remember here is that uh, the important features of every single phase apart from that they are not going to ask you any separate question from here even if they ask they will ask you group B questions but you need to understand the regulation of cell cycle in much more details which we will uh, talk about in a moment so here you see that it begins with this G1 phase so where RNA and protein synthesis take place no DNA synthesis at all and uh, then right after this uh, G1 phase because you know G1 means the cell cycle begins and once you are in the G1 phase uh, then you cannot go back so this is kind of a rate determining part you know once G1 is there you need to continue with G1 phase so even before entering into G1 cell can check few things you know everything is prepared or not because it's a huge event cell cycle division of the cell it's a huge event so they need to utilize this this idea and information that everything is okay if, if, if not then uh, it will never enter into the G1 phase in the first place it will remain in G0 state so once G1 state is done then the S phase uh, DNA synthesis phase actually where the replication takes place duplication of the chromosome takes place and right after the S phase which lasts about 6 to 8 hours then again goes to G2 phase or growth two phase when no DNA synthesis but RNA and protein synthesis continues because the proteins may be required during the mitotic phase because in the M phase actual separation physical separation of the chromosome and se separation and splitting of the cytosol of the cell take place so at this point all the proteins are prepared and then finally the M phase the mitosis phase uh, where which only takes about one hour so you can see the M phase is only a one hour and rest of all the other phases near about 20 like 6, 18 to 24 hours so you can see the interface uh, consumes a lot of time that's the reason why a uh, cell is dividing from the zygote into making an organism the cell divides very very fast and the way to divide very fast is to skip 
this whole interface and only sticking to the M phase because if they skip the interface then they can divide very much fast but the, but the question is they need a lot of proteins to be built up and produced earlier before the M phase can start to do so. Now right after the M phase when the cell prepares itself again for division another round of division if it finds any difficulty like uh, many cells can shift the gear to G0 state and can stay in the G0 state. In the G0 state, the cell can remain for a while and then uh, it can shift the gear or sometimes there are few cells can always remain at the G0 state in the dormant state inside. So this is a basic overview. Now why we need to know this cell cycle and cell cycle phases is because the cell cycle regulation takes place is something with the help of checkpoints. It's mean, it means you know it's a, it's a sequential journey from G1, S, G2, it continues like the G1, S, G2, M, the sequential journey. And with the sequential journey, uh, we are in every single part, every single uh, mm, transition phases like G1, S, S, G2, G2, M, there is a checkpoint. And this checkpoint is going to ensure that everything that is required for the cell to move to the next phase is ready and it's proper. Then all it is allowed to uh, do so. So this is what happens in every single uh, place there is this checkpoint. So that's how it's, it's actually uh, protesting. It has to check. The cell will block and prevent the cell cycle to progress to the next phase. And then <clears throat> once they find everything is okay, then they will only allow it to pass to the next phase, which we will see in a moment now. So the control uh, pathways of the cell cycle all are done uh, by inhibition. And the inhibition, I mean, you know, there are two different type of proteins are actually involved in the process of activating the cell cycle and continuing the cell cycle process while there are a few more proteins involved as accessory proteins that makes those other protein activated or deactivated. Now generally most of the cell cycle will be controlled by inhibition mechanism that means normally the cell is not allowed to move to the next phase although every proteins are prepared only when a certain amount of other activated proteins are present and chemical modifications are possible, then only the cell is transferred to the next step. So for DNA integrity, we have the cell cyclin dependent kinase or CDK. This is the key molecule for the process of cell cycle regulation. Cyclin dependent kinase or CDK. CDK as it's a kinase enzyme, kinase can phosphorylate other proteins and this phosphorylation activates other protein in our body. Now this activation leads to the transition from one phase to the other. But the CDK cannot function on its own. It requires an accessory protein known as cyclin. It's an activator of CDK. Without cyclin, CDK cannot function. So for every single phase of cell cycle, G1, S, G2, we need its specific CDK cycling partner. Without the CDK cycling partner, <coughs> excuse me, the cell cycle may not progress further. Apart from kinase, there are other enzymes known as phosphatase because you know kinase can add a phosphate group to activate a protein. So obviously we need a phosphatase to deactivate that protein by cleaving that phosphate group away. And we also involve with ubiquitin dependent proteolysis to get rid of any protein which we don't need after its job is done, after its job is finished during the cell cycle. 